Hello, 171 class. This is your notes on how to handle um, the absolute value function when you're doing that for your functions project. So what I've got here is a picture. It's geese flying, and they got that bee, nice V shape going on. Uh, it's a little. It's kind of like it's rotated because of the angle that the picture was taken. So I'm going to adjust that down here. It's typically at the top. This one's already been rotated a little bit. I'm going to rotate it till it is a V shape. Now, with most of the images, or some of the images you guys uh, come up with, like a, uh, a roof on a house, for instance, you won't need to do this rotation or anything, but just to get this to have the absolute value shape, I'm going to kind of rotate it a little bit. So, once I get it pretty close, I'm going to click off of here, and then I'm going to open up down here, got it on the screen, the uh, snipping tool, and then save that new picture like this okay and I'll click save and I'll call it something like absolute value all right and then and then here on our functions project part of our Moodle page I add a grid all right I got my grid on there so I'm gonna right click and then save as and then I'll call it the value with grid and then I always right click and choose a blank layout before I insert a picture. All right, and like always, I stretch this out, make it a little bit bigger initially. All right, then I'm going to add in my axes, just like in the last video. I'm going to make this the x-axis, this the y-axis. All right, then I'll add some points down here. Um, I guess I'll use their beaks. And I'm trying to get the ones on the corners if I can. Okay, now I'm going to open up Excel. I'm going to estimate each one of these points that I've put in there. All right, I've got all of them in there. I had to estimate a lot of decimals, but still, I got them all in there. Now, what I want to do here, remember, let me blow up Excel. All right, the problem here is if I highlight all my data and go to insert, and then do the same thing we do on the other video, scatter plot, and I make this scatter plot, and I right click any data point. The big problem is when I click add trend line, there is no absolute value. Okay, this moving average on here is not absolute value. It has like a V shape in there, but that's not absolute value. So what I have to do here is I have to use a linear. Remember, absolute value is a broken line. It's like a line on this part, and then instead of it continuing down, this part right here bends back up. So what we're going to do here, we're going to take the left side where this part right here dips down and starts back up when we get to right here where we have the linear pattern on the right side but then it breaks and starts going back up we're going to take all of these points right here and we're literally going to move them down below uh, the same position on the x-axis so you need to make when you do this you need to make your V turn at the origin and then we're going to take these points and we're going to treat them. This one was one, two, three above. Okay, this 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 point right here. We're going to take that point and we're going to treat it as if it were actually instead of three above, one, two, three below, as if it were down here in the same position. And now it's actually continuing that linear pattern. And then this one right here, we would it's one, two, three, four, and a little bit more than four above. We would do one, two, three, four, a little bit more below. Okay, but all that's happening here is the x coordinate's not changing. The y coordinate is being negated. So instead of having to um, redo it for every single point and redrawing everything, all we have to do is go to Excel and the ones that I have highlighted here, the points I have highlighted, are these points right here that are on the left hand side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these points and I'm actually just going to negate the Y column. I'm going to negate all the values for Y. So instead of 3, I'm going to put negative 3. Instead of 4.8, I'm going to put negative 4.8. All right, and now all of these points are actually now going to go below the x-axis. And you see now my scatter plot looks like a line. So this is what I had before, and again, as I change those points, that line's changing. See how it's going downhill? And now a line does a pretty good job of estimating where everything's going to be. So now I'm going to right click the trim line. Again, you can 
just do all this at once, just negate all these y coordinates immediately. And then uh, format trend line. And then I'm going to do display equation, display r squared. So now we see a line does a very good job of this, the transform data. A line's doing a very good job. All right, and now I'm back in the uh, PowerPoint. I'm going to paste that formula in. Oops. And then remember, if I hit uh, select all this, like gray everything, everything gets highlighted. I can hit Control G for group, and I can start to shrink this around. Oops. I'll shrink it. I can make this lettering a little bit bigger. All right, and bring it up here. Here's my model that I've got with it. But that's again, that's not the model for this. That's the model for if all these points were down below down here, and the line went straight through there. So what we have to do is alter the model. We have to go in here, and right here where the X is shift the button above the inner key on your keyboard will create the absolute value bars that will put around it. So this becomes our model. It's If it were the original uh, line that it, that, that it had, you just take the X from the original model that Excel gives you, that model with just an X in it, okay, and then you alter it by putting the absolute values around the X. Okay, nothing else changes, you just put the absolute values of bars around the X. So again, to, to kind of go back over it, all the points, every single point from your original image on the left side of the Y axis, every single one of those points, we negate the Y value. All right, the Y value changes its sign, and that creates a line, a linear pattern in the data. We find the, the uh, equation of that line, the regression line there with Excel. Okay, Excel can do a line, so we use Excel after we've moved the points, get that, and then we come back and just replace the X with the absolute value of X. Everything else stays what it was. All right, I've got my data, the original data, all right? Notice that the negative 3, the negative 4.8 is back to positive 3, positive 4.8, so it's the original data, not the transformed data. So I've got that in my calculator. I'm going to hit second y equals. That's the stat plot. And I'm going to turn the plots on. And I'm just doing this right now to show you. I notice that's on. I'm going to hit zoom. And then I'm going to hit 9. But I just want to show you that 9 is zoom stat. So zoom 9. So there's my data. Okay, It's like the original data was uh, in the picture. Okay. But now when I go into... Y equals, I'm going to put in this function. I'm going to put in absolute value of X. Now, absolute value is under the math button, under NUM for number. Right there's ABS, absolute value. Absolute value of X. All right, the newer TI-84s will just literally be able to put a bar around the X. All right, and then there's plus the 7, 0.7226. So I've got all that in there. Now when I hit graph, here comes that absolute value equation. So again, it misses it a little bit on the left. It misses a little right in the right. It hits a lot right here in the middle. I hit trace uh, x 1.1. The y is negative two. All right. So there's. Oops. Sorry. Hit down. Sorry. There. I'm on the absolute value model. You got to hit down to actually get on the model. But anyway, I can hit zero now. See, it's a little bit above. Okay. It's like almost at one here. Um, but it's Again, the reason why it's off a little bit is because this is the absolute value function itself is supposed to be perfectly symmetric, and we can see this thing is uh, not perfectly symmetric. Okay, but I do have that V shape. It misses again the predicted values as it gets further and further away from the y axis, but it does a pretty good job. You know, they're tight around there. Um, again, if you're using those images uh, similar to a rooftop, that I mean, as as long as your orientation, as long as you're standing straight in front of it you can make it perfectly symmetric to like an imaginary axis those will have you know very good models when you go to plot the data but again this was a a an image of 
uh, birds migrating. So, I mean, it's, you know, hard to get those into a perfect V shape. So it's off a little bit on the model. But again, what you are going to plot, you're going to use this calculator. You can use second graph for the table and just plot some of these values in on your original image. And when you go to plot some of these values, I would definitely minimize your uh, PowerPoint and just be able to see like the image itself. All right, um, blow this up a little bit. Because you want to be able to, uh, you know, not have to keep minimizing, going back and forth and back and forth. Also, make sure to use a different uh, color. Okay, I used red before, so I'm going to switch to blue now. When I go to plot the, the points, All right, and then you're just going to get as close as you can with these. So I'm going to get um, 0 0.7226 would be around there. So for when you do the absolute value, when you plot it, make your model on there. Um, the easiest thing to do is to just plot a couple of points and then insert these lines, so insert shapes, and then select these lines. And then I'm going to connect that point with any of these other two points on here. And just kind of extend it out through that point. And then um, do make sure it goes through the second point. And then just make it a little bit thicker. So I'm going to make this blue. And then I'm going to make it a little bit thicker by changing the weight. I then do the same thing on the other side. All right, and there is the, um, the finished model. Again, I would want to make sure that this thing is visible. So I would pull it down right there. All right, and then blow it back up just so you can see just this. So there's the finished model. Again, it's fine if you were to you know, shrink these down and write. A summary here that's fine if you don't have enough room just put a new slide and then put the, the summary on the next page but there's what I'm looking for again you can hit control a oops over here click in the actual image control a and then control G again everything's grouped and you can move it you can shrink it down make it bigger however you want to do it but once you've got the model in there all your points shown and that's um, that's the way you can make the image. Okay, so there's my model for this. And again, not the greatest model. Strong R squared, all right, and again, it's because of these tighter points closer to the center. Uh, but the further away we get, we start to lose that symmetry, and that's why they uh, start to see that gap. Now, when I do a negative, an absolute value that opens downward, um, and I make my points that are on this thing, once again, it's going to be really important to um, know to change only the left side. So the points that I end up making here, so I've got the points put in for this image. Once again, it's always important that when you make these, when you do these plots, that you only change the Y coordinates for the ones that the, that have the negative x's. If you change the uh, the the y coordinates up here for the positive x's, I mean you put these points up high, it'll still make a line. But when you make that absolute value, your sign will be wrong in front of the x, which will end up being in front of the absolute value of x. So it's always important that you change the y coordinates that are with the negative x's. So I'm going to change this to a positive one, three, four, five, six. All right, and I made a line this way. And again, notice this time R squared is very high, almost a perfect line. All right. And so this time when I put this in my calculator, I need to alter the model by putting the absolute value sign again around the X. But notice this time that model that Excel gave us already has a negative because the absolute value is opening downward. So if I change the right side instead of the left, I put these points and change their y values, I would have had a positive sloping line and the sign on the absolute value function that we ended up with would have been wrong. So once again, it's very important to change only the y's that correspond to the negative x's when you do this. All right, I'm going to, I got my data in there, the original data again. I'm going to go to y equals and change this to our new model. All right, and then zoom. Nine. So you can see now, because this was symmetric at the center of that picture, 
because we had something that was nice and symmetric from the angle where the picture was taken. Uh, we get a very good model. Everything's kind of going through the points that we had. And when I plot this on there, it would look a lot better than the one we ended up with for our original. Again, because it was birds in flight, so it wasn't a perfectly symmetric. Plus the angle that you're taking the picture at. You can definitely control the angle better here than you could here with the birds in flight. But again, I would just use the calculator now and plot these points with the trace button. All right, plot plotting points or second graph and get a table. And just plot those points in there to make the model.